you were already connected. Many legends say that we've always been leading to this moment together. One of the other teachings about the red thread is that you are only responsible for the peace that you are holding. And here's the thing about people who serve others. We have the capacity to see the whole ball of thread. In fact, we can probably see the sheep from which the thread came. We can see all the way back. And so therefore we think we're responsible for every single part. We do have the responsibility of seeing every part and knowing every part, but we're only responsible for our part. And if you could really take responsibility for your piece and you could be in a global community of others who are also taking responsibility for their piece, how much would be different? Everything. So take a moment to untie your piece of thread and have your neighbor next to you tie it around your wrist if you choose. And if you end up with several pieces, guess what? There's someone else at the United Nations that you need to give that piece to. So let's just take a moment and allow you to be blessed by another person in the room as you tie on your threads. And then please take your seats. May many blessings of creativity and shared stories allow you to heal and to build the life of your dreams. Metakoye Oyasi, we are all related. Thank you. It is such a powerful thing to be able to collaborate with other women who bring their gifts. And so for, is it 10 years now plus, we have been in our community blessed to have Carmen lead us as we do our work. Most of my community are painters and poets. So we gather together to create paintings of transformation, weaving our wounds, like literally painting them in and then covering them with gold and flowers and declaring it is complete. And at the completion of many of those many day processes, Carmen will come and she will help us move that energy and carry our prayers. And she was with us a couple years ago at UNCSW. And one of the things that we did, which we'll be doing later this afternoon, is, well, I'm gonna actually let her tell you about it. Come on up, Carmen. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Carmen Baraka. Spirit Warrior, Apache Eagle Clan, Cherokee, Colombian, Peruvian. Um, my work and my medicine is a combination of all of my indigenous roots. Ahoma Takweyasin means we are all related, all interconnected. I'm so honored to be with you again today. I, was, I spoke here three years ago on uh, indigenous women and girls and the plight that they carry. And that was a great honor. And I am here this time to speak about the healing through intentional creativity and the healing through storytelling. You know, we, we're all storytellers. We're all carrying the baton of our ancestors. And it's our time. Many of us has had the baton handed to us. You know, what will we do with that? How will we heal other women and girls? And you wouldn't be here if you weren't kick-ass women who came to, like, serve other women make changes, power up. That's what we're here for. So one of my issues from three years ago uh, was that Native American people are never on mainstream TV. You do not hear, anybody here, if you raise your hand and say you've heard, well, until recently, but we'll get to that. But my whole life as a Native American, I'm like, every single culture, think about it, are spoke of on television, but you never hear, oh, the plight of Native American people, what they're going through, because many Native people are still living in third world countries here in America, without running water, without clean water, without electricity. So these things have to change, and this is my fight. And uh, since I've been working with Shiloh, I have recognized the healing power of painting. It's helped me. Because we, we have to paint and dance and play music and be in circle 
to heal each other. This is what our ancestors did. The women got together in the village and we said, we decided what needed to happen and then we would go home and tell our men. And then the men would go out and console and come back and say, we've made a decision. <laughs> so we need to do that some more and we need to empower ourselves so that we can help the young women in the future. I will not stand for how women and girls are still being treated in the world. The Me Too movement finally started. There's so much more to do, but we are not going back. They can change all the laws they want, but we're not going back. So two things happened since I was here three years ago, as far as media. Two Native American Congresswomen. Yeah. The other thing that got us in the news was Standing Rock in yes. North Dakota. I spent time there and I just want to tell you what that was like because native tribes who really never get together, I mean, we're, they're trying to survive, put on their regalia, came in horses, came in bucks. I mean, they came every way. They, every tribe, I think, in the United States showed up to say, we are not letting this oil pipeline through this sacred land we are not going to compromise the water. And I, you, when I was there, you would see them come in with their regalia and their horses and bringing their flag. And at the end, there was this huge road with flags all the way down it. It was an amazing moment in time. And it showed me the power of this connectedness. And then on top of that, non-Native people came from all over the world. People quit their jobs to come. People felt that calling that... It's time. We have to save Mother Earth, and these people are trying to save the water and the land for all of us. You have to realize that, for the most part, indigenous people all over the world are the ones that are fighting and dying mm -hmm. for the air, water, and land for us all. Mm -hmm. Our world is getting smaller and smaller. When you see that this pipeline is going and you don't fight for that, it's going to be down your street next. If we don't fight for each other, we do not have a chance. And so my quest in life, and I've been leading circles for over 30 years to empower women and girls, but my quest is like to be the rainbow tribe. That's what I believe in now. The Native American people and learn our wisdom and what our knowledge of the land and non-Native people in every color. That's the rainbow tribe. And until we have that rainbow tribe, there's no chance of us healing. The separateness of everyone is... is divides us and there's no chance of healing. So I'm here to say, I invite you to be the rainbow tribe. I invite us all to stand and circle together in the way that we used to. Also, um, I put a paper in one of the, in the folders. And what this is about is my Apache people. I'm wearing my Apache camp dress. This is what Native American women uh, on my Apache tribe wear always. And it's honoring and it's, it's powerful. And what we're doing in Oak Flat, Arizona, you will find that paper, many ways to help. Right now, it's the last of our sacred land. Giant boulders, pristine water, flora and fauna, critters everywhere, beautiful. And two of our congressmen sold us down the river by putting this bill on the back of a military bill that was a thousand pages that said, you can take this Apache land, you from Canada, and you can mine it. And this is where we have our coming of age ceremonies for our girls. It's beautiful, four days of beautiful ceremony. And where many of our ancestors are buried. And they plan to decimate that land a mile deep and miles wide with toxins that we will never even be able to approach that land again. And downstream from that is the reservation. Right. And my people will be drinking that toxic water. So it's Oak Flat, and you'll find information. Please just check that out. <clears throat> I get emotional about it. Mm -hmm. it's scary. But what I want to say is that, you know, we are all warrior women. If you're here, you're a warrior. And sometimes women say, a oh, warrior, I, that's, you know, masculine. I don't want them. I'm like, no. The opposite of that male warrior is the female warrior. Us, who are fighting for women and girls... We're fighting for Mother Earth. We're fighting to make sense. We are the healers. We don't want to give our children a poison apple. 
We, you know, we are the healers and we need to be in circle. Our ancestors were all once in circle and it's time to circle again, to, to pass the talking stick and tell our truths, to heal with creativity and art. And this is that moment in time for us to band together like never before. We all know that our planet is in trouble and we just can't wait any longer. I know you're all kick-ass women, but this is time to go. That's enough. It's us. Let's face it. I'm serious. The men have had plenty of time and it's not going well. And so <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not against men before someone says, oh my God, no. I am, nobody loves empowered men who are progressive more than me. It's just there's not enough of them. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we need to go back. We need to speak to our fathers. We need to speak to our brothers. We need to raise our sons and not say, oh, he's a man. He, what, what, he's five. He's checking out a woman. Oh, he's a man. No, no. We have to stop the madness. We have to bring our sons up differently. They're not going to be wimpy because they have empathy. You know, it's just time for change. And I've been working for over 30 years for change. I'll probably work till the end of my days. That is my path. I began at seven, and I'm still doing it. So, yes, at seven, I had my hands on my hip apparently a lot. I'm a family story. <laughs> well, I won't have that. How is that right? <laughs> no, 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 no. So what I, what I wrote for you all to, to bring us together before I do a prayer and a closing ceremony to send your prayers I wrote this poem that would just, uh, that we could participate together. And you'll know your part when you get there. I would just like to bring it together and a few of uh, the creative women from our group will be also saying parts. Are you ready, ladies? Yes. The no. poem is in your folder, so just take a moment to identify it. Oh, okay. But your part, you'll know it. You don't have to read it, but if you want to. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes. All right. May we recognize our sister. Can I start? We'll get thinking. May we recognize our sister when we look into her eyes. May we see her pain and angst, her wonder and joy, and be with her and that we all know what it is like to be a woman and fight the good fight. For the rights inherent to all women and girls, we stand. For the ones who are forced to marry and bear children before their time, we, we stand. stand. For the women and girls that are abused, beaten, and sex trafficked, we, we stand. stand. For the ones without rights who are per <coughs> persecuted at the whim of men, we, we stand. stand. For those who fight for clean water, air, and healthy food for our children, grandchildren, and future generations, we, we stand. stand. For those who are persecuted for their race, color, or gender, we, we stand. For the heartbreak of the women who had their children ripped from them on reservations and borders in too many circumstances, we, we stand. For our future world where women are equal and fully empowered, we, we stand. stand. For the truth of how the Americas came to be and for schools to teach the truth so that we may all heal. We stand for the rights of women to make their own decisions about their bodies and their personal space. We stand for all those who have realized that to serve others is the highest form of spirit progression and awakening. We stand for the mother of us all, Mother Earth. We are sisters in unity and we stand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carmen and Alexis. It's a really incredible experience to hear their stories, isn't it? Yes. Let's just acknowledge them together for their courage, their resilience, their wisdom. We're exploring the idea as a community to create something similar to Ho'oponopono from the Hawaiian tradition, where as a part of our own responsibility to acknowledge where we live, to begin dialogues with Native people in your area, 
to simply be transparent and vulnerable and to say, I'm sorry, I didn't know or I did know. I want to stand with you now. Show me, stand with me, stand with me. And you can make up your own variation. It doesn't have to be formulaic, but we don't have to wait for our governments to sanction an apology. We're waiting too long. I love that Australia and Canada are leading in that way. But we need to do some work here. We're not waiting for them. We're starting with you. And so we as a community are daring you to go back into your communities, to discover the indigenous people where you live. We're not going to patronize, to um, pity, to take over, to take on. We're going to learn and to be present. And it doesn't matter if you know if you're, what your ancestors' involvement is. If you do, then you can be a part of that. But if you don't, you can just say, I don't know, but I know I'm a part of it. And I'm a part of clearing and healing my own line in this moment. Would you be willing to begin that dialogue specifically where you live to honor the land, the water, the people, and the stories to be part of the healing. Thank you for saying yes to doing that. And in this way, we're going to overcome this separation that we're really experiencing that is an enforced reality that we're stepping out of. So in a moment, we're going to have a ceremony with Carmen. You about ready? Okay. So can I step out here for a moment? To create circle. We're doing the best we can with that. Like I said in the beginning, we wanted to create an experience for you, with you. So instead of just all the bad news that we often hear and the call to serve that we also hear all the time, for you to have that summoning of your own heart's reason for the call and the work that called you here in the first place, to share your stories and a chance to offer up the prayers that are deepest in your heart, to really have a felt experience. When I go to the consultation days at UNCSW, I'm struck by a handful of things. One is that all the decision makers who need to hear all those voices are, are not in the room. That we're, we're preaching to the choir, which is pretty awesome that there's enough people in that choir that care. And I love that. Because where do you get to gather for two weeks with others who are doing work, although different from yours, but that is contributing to the healing. There's incredible energy. We also notice that there's not that many men in the room. CSW is about women's work, but it doesn't say for men not to come. And I was struck just sitting there with tears pouring out of me at the thought that to end violence against women tomorrow, all we need is the perpetrators of violence to say I'm not doing it anymore. Like, we are spending our life force, mm -hmm. our lives and our resources organizing, trying to create safety and transformation. And all these women struggling their whole life, I know my family did, and I am. If the violence could just stop, and the people who are causing the violence would not do it anymore, it would be over. Can you believe that the wars and the violence would be over? But each one of us does have a responsibility, a part of our red thread, to bring the message out to the men, and yes, some of the women who create violence as well. When we're speaking about the men, we're not talking about the men in our lives that we love, that are doing the work. That's a part of it too. But we also know that most of the violence is still perpetrated by men who are also hurt and who are ready for transformation because they also are not receiving what they need. So another dare is an invitation to go home and to speak to the men in your family, to talk to them, to tell your story, to bring that forward. And in this moment, we'd love for you to just close your eyes again and to settle in. We're going to have a rare opportunity. I don't know if many of you have been a part of a Native American ceremony. What's wonderful is that any and all spiritual traditions are welcome in this space. You can be standing from anywhere, and this works. We're inviting you to call forth your prayer for the world. Your personal prayer and your prayer for the world. Like 
yes, peace, but specifically, like my prayer is specifically for self-expression and for the peace of the world. And I feel that so deeply because I know that when people have access to their within, they have transformation. So my prayer is about creativity. What is your prayer, the deepest prayer of your heart? Allow that to just fill your physical body as if that wish and that feeling and that happening, like it's happening now, to feel the feeling of that prayer being realized now in your physical body. Feel that in the field all around us, that heart field that goes out 15 to 20 feet, all of our heart fields connected in this moment. See it and feel it in the field of the heart. Bring that prayer into your consciousness, into your brain and mind, your awareness, your intelligence. Feel that prayer in consciousness. <coughs> this prayer is your intention. Hold it powerfully and gently. <laughs> 